Okay, so we're going to look at a really simple technique today to make some scrap wood coasters that you can gift or sell at craft fairs and markets. So we start off with some simple fence posts. These are 8 to 9 centimeters, 3 to 4 inches. And the very first thing we need to do here is to start cutting them to the right uh, thickness. So we set them up on the chop saw or miter saw. Pick a size that looks right to you doesn't need to be perfect, doesn't need to be uh, exactly consistent every time uh, uh, because that adds to the uh, character and the unique handmade nature of these kind of products. So let's just chop up a few of these and then we can take a look at the next step. So here's these seven coasters we've cut up. As you can see they're pretty rough but they're showing some really nice grain and nice knots. So I'll set up my basic little belt sander here, clamp it onto the bench, and start to clean up these coasters. Uh, fairly rough grit on this sander. I think it's uh, about an 80 grit. So set this up at top speed and start cleaning off the uh, edges. I'm going to do each of the sides once in each direction. Then I'm going to put a little chamfer on, round over the corners, and then finally send off the main surfaces on each of these. Okay, great. So now we have a bunch of coasters sanded off with that fairly rough 80 grit paper. So that really took off the, the rough corners and allowed us to chamfer down the edges and to hack off any really rough splinters or bits of wood. So now we need to go to something like a random orbital sander, a higher grit now, maybe a 120 grit, and this will give us a much uh, smoother finish and a finish that's just nicer to touch which is actually critical with something like this because people will be handling it all the time and that will be one of the ways they sort of judge the, the quality of this kind of product. So what we're doing with this higher grit paper is getting a much finer finish to the coasters. Again we're going around every edge, doing every corner, doing the chamfers and doing the flat surfaces to give that nicer textural finish to these before we go to the uh, staining or varnishing phase. Now I appreciate I'm spending a lot of footage time on sanding here but this really is an important step and it's kind of what differentiates uh, really basic DIY projects from something that's a bit more professional and commercial. Uh, the, 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 the final finish that you achieve on products like these is, is really very important and it's what makes a lot of people feel that these are higher quality products. So even though no woodworker really loves sanding, um, if you skip on this step you'll re really end up with a, a substandard product so it's worth putting the time and the effort into this and just relaxing into this part of the process. The coasters are all cut, rough sanded and smooth sanded so now it's time to move on to uh, finishing them. So I've got a couple of different oils, antique oil, Danish oil, beeswax and some stain I'm just going to experiment with these on the coasters and give you a look at the different kind of finishes that we can get with each of these. So I'm going to do this really rough and ready style. I'm just going to kind of splash on the stains and the oils um, and give you a quick look at the, the, the different finishes that you end up with. Just whizzing through the application of these oils and stains right now just to give you a quick look again. Uh, very messy. Um, I'm definitely not uh, very skilled at doing this. Um, so putting on the stain, putting on the two different oils and 
The last is the uh, beeswax that I'm going to put on, which is one of my favorites to work with. So just quickly wiping these on, and now I'll stack them all up and give you a look at them side by side. So these are the four products and the four finishes. Uh, typically, I go for the second one here, the wood stain. It gives a very dull, very matte kind of finish. So this is the finished product. Really great for gifts. And we find they sell really, really well at markets and craft fairs. Typically, these sell for 15 to 20 US dollars or euros at craft fairs. At a recent fair, we were selling these. People started photographing them, Instagramming them, and we had people coming to the fair specifically to pick up these products. So they really do sell very well at the right kind of event. But again, they make great gifts for friends and family as well.